name is Senior Class President, and I'm honored to welcome you to the commencement of the class of 2020. Since the beginning of my seventh grade year, it has been my goal to speak at my high school graduation. I remember sitting in Mrs. Ferryworth's reading class, thinking about how I still had five more years until senior year, and high school had only just begun. I imagined what a senior graduation would be like and what I would say about the opportunity to speak. At that moment, I started writing, and by the end of the class, I had read an entire speech from start to finish. If someone would have told me that day in seventh grade that getting toilet paper would be more important than giving a graduation speech, I wouldn't have believed them. <laughs> but still, goal accomplished. It is an honor to stand here today at my high school graduation, even though it isn't exactly what I thought it would be like, and finally make my seventh grade self dream come true by reading to you what I wrote five years ago. Today is the day my life begins. Today I become more than just a high school student. I become a grown up with responsibilities other than doing my homework and keeping my grades up. Today I become an adult with bills to pay, money to make, dreams to achieve, and choices to make on my own. I am free to choose what I want to do and where I want to go next. Today I leave a place that has been my second home since kindergarten. It's time to say goodbye to the teachers who taught me everything, the friends I have known since childhood, and Cranberry High School itself. I don't know what the future holds, but starting today I will be willing and ready to take on anything and everything. Today is the day my life begins. After 13 years of waiting, it is not a distant reality anymore. It begins here. It begins today. I wrote that speech five years ago with the idea that I would have a normal graduation ceremony. Little did I know that my senior year would be stripped at the last moment because of a global pandemic. I wrote about being ready for anything and everything, and I look at that now and laugh. Through these trying times, I have realized that we could not be ready for anything. No matter where we go or what we do, there are challenges ahead of us. But we have the power to make the most out of this unfortunate situation. We are a class that is headstrong, passionate, and has the ability to overcome. There is nothing strong enough to take those qualities away from us. Life is nothing but moments. Looking back on who I was in seventh grade to who I am now, I realized that I did not appreciate the little things. As much as I hated going to some of my classes, I never stopped to think about it being my last time in a high school classroom. Or the last time I would sit at a lunch table with people that watched me grow up. Or the last time my friends and I would cry about how badly we did on a chemistry test. Those are the little things that we were too busy, too young, and too distracted to notice. Those are the moments I will remember when I'm old and wishing I could turn back time. We need to appreciate the moments we've been given and the people we got to spend those moments with. I want to thank the people who loved me, taught me, laughed with me, cried with me, comforted me in my failures, and reveled in my success because it was you who got me where I am today. I wish I had the honor of standing with my classmates one last time, but I feel that this quote resonates the most with our current situation. A strong friendship doesn't need daily conversation, doesn't always need togetherness, as long as the relationship lives in the heart, true friends will never part. Who knows what tomorrow holds, but today we are graduating, and it is the greatest feeling in the world. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our valedictorian, Maddie Cornelius.
Our goal each day was to make memories and lift each other's spirits through even the worst of days. Although our, years of mem our year of memories may have been cut short, and we did not expect our senior year to end this way, we still have many memories to look back on over the past four years of life together. Winnie the Pooh said it the best, how lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. It is hard to say goodbye, especially when we didn't get a proper one like everyone else. But that's what makes our class unique. We can't complain about what has happened to us because we have gained so much more from it. Like many others, we have lost so much, but we are grateful for the gains as well. So during this time, our class has tried to stay connected over social media. We gain more family time, less homework, more alone time to think, more time to play games with our families, more knowledge from reading books, and so many more things. We have learned that it is hard to not see our friends every day. Also, we have learned how valuable toilet paper is to all of us. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better class. Our formal goodbye seems delayed this year. I feel like we've already had the chance to get used to our new roles as graduates, far more than other classes at this point. It has given us time to reflect on what we miss the most about high school. What we will all miss is seeing all of our smiling friends walking through the hallways of this school and all the laps in classes, racing to the bus or our cars after the last bell rings. Mr. Smith's deep voice yelling, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> During the assemblies, Mr. Earp's stage voice when announcing the starting lineup, Maddie Cornelius! Mrs. Motter making us laugh with silly sayings. Yes, Mrs. Motter, you are the whitest person here. <laughs> Senor Bogus and Madame Sturdivant, hola and bonjour. Mr. Kugler's political discussions, Mrs. McCain's homework. Oh wait, I don't think I'm going to miss that. <laughs> Mrs. Yernick smiles in excitement over the mail. Mr. Beattie, who's quiet every day except for one day of the year, when he screams to show us different decibels. Don't worry, I won't mimic that one. <laughs> and I could go on and on and on with many others, Mrs. Piercy, Mr. Yoder, and Mr. Deemer, as there are so many more great memories that we will miss from this school. But I won't pick on them today. We are also appreciative for the senior activities we were able to attend this year. The senior trip was full of special memories, as were the Victorian Christmas party, homecoming, sporting and academic competitions, and even designing our senior t-shirts. We might forget the topics of our everyday talks at lunch, what our next class was, what homework we had to do that night, and what plans we had going on after school, what time our sports practice was, and whether we had to work or not. However, I am positive we will never forget the last with this unique class as we have shared many unforgettable memories over the past four years. I'll leave you with a quote from our friend SpongeBob. You will never know the true value of a moment until it becomes a memory. My classmates and I are so appreciative for all the memories we've shared at Cranberry High School. Thank you to the administration, the faculty, our families, and our friends. And lastly, my fellow classmates for making this such a wonderful experience. He said, and I quote, I was trying to feel some kind of goodbye. 
I mean, I've left schools and places I didn't even know I was leaving them. I hate that. I don't care if it's a sad goodbye or a bad goodbye, but when I leave a place, I like to know I'm leaving it. If you don't, you feel even worse. We are all aware that this year has been altered in so many different ways. I remember distinctly on March 13th, joking with my best friends that we should all dress nicely for when to be the last day of high school we ever had. It was a joke. And I don't remember what I wore on the last day, but I do recall looking into the faces of my teachers and friends and feeling terribly sad that I was going to have to give up even a few days of my senior year. Holding the situation mirrors ours quite well. Without knowing it, so many ordinary things we had grown accustomed to came to pass without our consent. There were so many little things that we took for granted. Sitting in the library with our friends, eating lunch together every day, taking way too many bathroom breaks just to chat, choir and band rehearsals, club meetings, sporting events, and simply walking through the halls of a place that we have called home for 13 years. I remember at the end of our softball season last year, crying because our seniors were graduating and they never get to play with them again. Little did I know I was mourning the loss of my own softball career that day too. Every track member, softball player, and baseball player said goodbye to their sports careers as juniors, and we never even knew it. Of course we cried then, or at least felt sad, but it was for the wrong reasons. We knew the end was coming, we just didn't know it was going to be so soon. We were supposed to be able to say goodbye to high school in waves. We accepted it. Mrs. Modder gave us a paper at the beginning of the year that had all the dates of every senior event here. It was simple. Senior trip, cap and gown photos, homecoming, winter formal, prom, Cedar Point, Mr. CHS, senior awards and banquet, our final day of walk through the school, everything leading up to today, June 3rd, our big moment. Each of these little events was supposed to ease us into this transition, but now those waves seem more like a tsunami. And I think that's why the cold from Catcher and the Rivers so they took our class so well. Just like Holden, we didn't care if it was a sad goodbye or a bad goodbye. Honestly, I think we all expected it to hurt, just not like this. So here we are now, our graduation, our final goodbye. I wish more than anything that I could be surrounded by my classmates right now. I wish I could look at all your faces and tell you how proud of you I am and how thankful I am to spend these years with you. But sadly, it is goodbye now. Goodbye to 13 years of wandering through these hallways. Goodbye to every club, every sporting event, every teacher, every friend, every memory. Goodbye to the class of 2020. And this goodbye hurts, but it hurts because this place is filled with so much laughter and memories that I know we will never be able to forget. And it is for that reason that I have never been more thankful to have something that is so terribly hard to say goodbye to. Now I would like to introduce our senior class vice president, the lovely Sage Slater. in your kitchen, or sitting in your bedroom, I'm glad you're here, even if I can't see you. I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time watching Netflix during this quarantine. Most of the office, because why not? That's where I heard this quote that I feel speaks volumes to our situation. Andy Bernard said, I wish there was a way to know you in the good old days before you actually left them. Some would say high school is the good old days, so we did know, but we had no idea how soon it would end. The morning of Friday the 13th, I made a post letting people know I would do a morning coffee run for our last day of high school. That was meant to be a joke, so I'm sorry if I did this. Us. <laughs> if anything, all of this has taught me that together we can get through anything. And to surround yourself with good people is vital. Thanks to Cranberry, I've been surrounded with the best. From the students to the faculty, Cranberry is providing with people I can rely on for anything. Even while I was being faced with my deepest hardship, I knew there would always be someone here to pick me up. Over the years, we've become like family, and that's something most schools can't say. They might, but it's not true. Which brings me to our families. Thank you for being there for us and with us right now. Thank you for the car rides, money, your love and support, 
buying from all of our fundraisers for the past 13 years, attending our concerts, games, and most importantly, thanks for all the money. <laughs> all these years of us making your lives crazy, and we appreciate every moment of what you've done, even if we didn't come right out and say it. So on behalf of all of us, thank you. I'd also like to give a little shout out to the moms and dads of our friends. Thanks for all the dinners, the advice from the random conversations you'd overhear, and for letting us know your door was always open. We love you just like family. Class of 2020, can you believe we've done it? Well, here we are, and no one expected this to be how we went out. Sure, having to miss the last days of our senior year kind of sucks. But hey, Matt McQuaid missed the first one, and he's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, my heart does hurt knowing I'll never get to walk these halls with you all again. But it's important to remember the good times that we have had, instead of focusing on what we've missed out on. I know everyone has different feelings about leaving Cranberry. You might be anxious and nervous to face everything coming your way. Maybe you're excited and feeling ready to take on the world. Or you might be feeling a bit lost and at a crossroad where to go next. It's not like we'll always have Mrs. Modder to mind to find us and get us back on track. Kind of like Elliot on the night tour during senior trip. That was a good time to have a mind. <laughs> But now it's our turn to take the next step and be able to get ourselves ready for the future. Although I'm sure each of you had at least one more thing you were looking forward to before our time was up, now it's officially coming to an end. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for the memories I will forever hold in my heart. Thank you for making Country Roads a sentimental song. <laughs> thank you for making a school feel like a home and friends feel like family. I will always cherish the time I've spent here, and that's all thanks to you. I'm so excited to see where each of you go and what the future holds for you. Not to mention, since we did not get a senior prom, I promise to make our 10-year reunion a rager. <laughs> I wish you the best, and I love you all. Now, please prepare yourselves for the one, the only, the amazing class treasurer, Michael Gunn. Things slip away so fast. I won't pretend and say it feels normal to be in a cap and gown today telling you a speech I wrote just a few days before this moment. It was only March before our last day of school that Sage made me a recipient of a group Snapchat asking if we would want coffee on our last day of senior year. At the time I laughed, rejected the offer, and assured myself it wasn't our last day, but I didn't see it coming. Like many of you, I was waiting for my college acceptances as the weekend off turned into weeks off and then months. After a slightly rough haircut, I love you mom, <laughs> a pile of masks in my car, and hours spent watching the news, I think we all knew we wouldn't be coming back. On some obscure day in April, I received my acceptance to my dream school, the acceptance I hoped I could one day share with my classmates and with my teachers who guided me for my entire education and shaped the class that stands before you. But instead, I found myself stuck in the reality of the situation. The CHS class of 2020 is the most resilient class to walk these halls. I've dug deeper into my own mind during this time as a means of brainstorming for my upcoming journey this fall at RISD. This includes taking time to re really reflect on the past 12 years of rich education I've had. It's easy to note that even though this ending isn't the one any of us desired, our relationship as a class runs deep. I already miss the ignorant high school drama and being upset with all of you guys that have become what feel like siblings. I'll miss the time spent performing in the auditorium or laughing in the stage wings with all of you, the inside jokes, the endless annotations in Mrs. Dixon's class, even when we didn't finish, working with Mrs. Hart until the dead of night on a quirky installation for prom, decorating our doors to be so tacky we went to class pizza party. Shaking bells out of a tissue box strapped around our waist to get Christmas Monopoly money. Shouting, sweet Caroline, ba, 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 at a prom we never got. None of these things I will get back, but I have a text I sent to Trevor Gladden this week to share with all of you as my advice for the future. Don't focus on what you wish you could have been already. You have to focus on who you are going to be. 
Not all of my memories between the walls of Cranberry Area High School are the most fond, but the way it has shaped me into the artist, friend, and person I am just yet becoming. How the staff has crafted such an outstanding body of kind young adults screams to the excellence of a small school in the corner of rural America. I cannot lie if I said I didn't take a lot of it for granted, but I know that deep down I have a respect for each individual at a school I never quite got to finish attending. Moving forward, I'm certain I'll never forget the wild experience that was senior year during a pandemic and being quite confused by everything 2020 has thrown at us. On that note, I'll end with my biggest advice for the underclassmen. I wish I knew before I was speaking here today. Breathe in the amazing, the good, the fun, the bad, the angry, and the sad parts of each year in high school. Because at any moment, you will realize you missed your chance to formally say goodbye to an amazing experience. Good evening, and I'd like to thank you all to the 2020 Cranberry Junior Senior High School graduation. This class has distinguished itself as being leaders. And no matter whether it's a virus or a terrorist attack, whatever they go through, they have risen to the top. And we appreciate the legacy that they have left to this school. Without any further hesitation, Mr. Benita, it is my pleasure to present to you for graduation the Cranberry High School Class of 2020. I certify to you that all the students seated here today have met all state and local requirements as outlined by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the Cranberry Area School Board. Thank you, Mr. Smith. As superintendent of the Cranberry Area School District, I accept the class of 2020 as having met all state and local requirements. With the first row, please rise and come forward to accept your diplomas. Elizabeth Grace Adams.
Kara Elizabeth Andres.
Jacob P. Kozak. Rachel Elizabeth Crate. Bradley Joseph Elslinger.
Ryan John Groger. Joseph Elliot Gunn. Morgan Renee Gustafson. Kristen Nicole Poe. Johnson. 
Andrew C. Jordan.
Jonathan Douglas Super.
Kylie Marie Schleifer. Richard G. Snyder. Christopher Andrew Smith.
Braden William Pineda. Cameron S. Walby. Michaela Ocon Wendman. Daniel Ebenezer Rye. 